South Korea is a small country with a population of over 50 million people and sits on the bottom of the Korean peninsula and shares a land border with North Korea. The South Korean military ranks six in the world according to the 2020 Global Firepower Ranking. They have highly capable ground units, technologically superior tanks, ships and advanced jet fighters. And currently, they're building something the world should be afraid of. Being a neighbor of two totalitarian countries in the world isn't a pleasant thing, especially if these countries are armed with nuclear weapons. North Korea may seem calm at the moment, but China is acting aggressively, expanding its territory in the South China Sea with the building of artificial islands and staking claim to more than 70 other reefs and islets. This is probably why South Korea felt they needed something more advanced to protect themselves and air superiority is key in any military. They came up with the fifth generation jet fighter program, KAI. KAI started out as a joint program between Samsung Aerospace, Daewoo Heavy Industries Aerospace Division and Hyundai Space and Aircraft Company. These companies are responsible for developing many of the country's aircraft and space vehicles like the South Korean Air Force's F-16Cs under technology agreements and help from Lockheed Martin and the ambitious Korean Space Launch Vehicle. But now, South Korea is getting even more assistance from Lockheed Martin on the KFX fifth generation stealth fighter that was first announced in 2001, four years before the United States put its Lockheed Martin built F-22 Raptor into service as the world's first operational fifth generation fighter. And taking a look at the new South Korean fighter, you might think you're looking at a newer model of the F-22 Raptor. The KFX fifth generation stealth fighter will replace South Korea's aging F-4DE Phantom II and the supersonic F-5EF Tiger II fleet. Considering KAI is a new player in military aviation, the program is very ambitious. The KFX is a single-seater, two-engined aircraft with advanced stealth capabilities. Its low operational cost and ease of maintenance will allow South Korea's Air Force to build the aircraft in large numbers. The idea was to design an aircraft that would surpass the capabilities of current fourth-generation fighters such as the F-16C Fighting Falcon and the Eurofighter Typhoon, but it would still be inferior to the F-35 Lightning II of which the South Korean Air Force has ordered 30. KAI expects to finish the first prototype by April 2021, with the flight testing to begin in the year 2022. The South Korean Air Force has 120 KFXs on order and plans to put them all into active service by the year 2032. Many designs of the aircraft were made by KAI during the early stages of the program, and the final design of the aircraft was accepted by the South Korean Air Force in 2018. Performance of the KFX is expected to improve with each of the six prototypes being built, followed by four years of trials and the completion of the stealth aircraft by mid-2026. As for some technical specifications, the KFX is 54.4 feet long and has a wingspan of 36.7 feet. This amazing looking fighter jet received its engines from General Electric Aviation in June 2020 and will be equipped with two F414 GE 400K afterburning turbofan engines which put out 22,000 pounds of thrust each with afterburner. They're controlled by some awesome technology a fully authority digital engine electronics control system, which consists of a digital computer, is an electronic engine controller and other related accessories that control all aspects of the KFX's engine performance. These engines are a variant of the General Electric F414 engines currently powering the FA-18 Super Hornets of the United States Navy and are co-developed and manufactured by General Electric and Hanwha Aerospace and assembled in South Korea. The two engines together will give the aircraft an ability to reach a maximum speed of Mach 1.8 and the new fighter will have a ferry range of 1,800 miles and be able to carry a total payload capacity of 17,000 pounds. At the beginning of the KFX program, it was believed South Korea possessed around 63% of the technologies required to deliver the operational fifth generation fighter. They needed help. So the Agency of Defense Development allowed KAI to seek partnerships around the world for crucial technologies such as Active Electronically Scanned Array or AESA radar system 
electronic warfare suite, infrared searching and tracking systems. Over the years, the program has successfully partnered with various companies around the globe to develop all the required technology that this stealth jet needs. The KFX is outfitted with an AESA radar system, the electronic warfare suite, terrain following, terrain avoidance system, the integration of the Meteor Beyond Visual Range air-to-air -air missile, and an MK-18 ejection seat and escape mechanism for the pilot. Finally, as part of South Korea's F-35 Lightning deal, the program was also offered technology transfer in a bunch of critical areas by Lockheed Martin. By 2019, the program had secured all the necessary technology to proceed with the production of the prototypes. From the very beginning, the airframe of the KFX was designed keeping in mind future upgrades in avionics and weapon systems. According to reports, the first mass-produced KFX aircraft are expected between 2026 and 2028. They'll be equipped with air-to-ground weapons in addition to air-to-air -air weapons. The Block II KFXs, which will be series produced from 2029, will be capable of performing full air-to-air -air and air-to-ground combat missions. Unlike other fifth-generation fighters, the KFX will not carry its weapons in an internal weapons bay, which will comprise its stealth capabilities, but will allow the fighter to have 10 hard points to carry various weapon types. The KFX is designed as an omniroll platform, which allows it to be used in both air superiority and ground strike missions. The main air-to-air -air missiles carried by the KFX would be infrared homing, short-range, AIM-9 Sidewinder and IRIS-T missiles. For medium and beyond visual range engagement, the aircraft will carry the active radar-guided AIM-120, AMRAAM and MBDA Meteor missile. All these missiles are currently leading weapons in their class, making the KFX a potent air-to-air -air adversary against existing 4th and 5th generation aircraft. For air operations conducted to destroy, neutralize or delay the enemy's potential before it can be used effectively against friendly forces, the KFX will feature the modernized Taurus KEPD-350 air-launched cruise missile developed by MBDA and Saab Aerospace Systems. The Taurus is capable of flying at supersonic speeds and incorporates stealth technology. It carries two 1,100-pound warheads and has a maximum range of 300 miles. The warhead is called Mephisto multi-effect penetrator, highly sophisticated and target optimized. It is designed to clear earth or a hardened underground bunker, then detonate its main warhead using a variable delay fuse. The South Korean variant of the missile will also feature a selective availability anti-spoofing module to prevent jamming. With all these capabilities, the KFX is going to be an extremely potent fighter aircraft. Despite various struggles with funding and technology acquisition, the program is finally well on its way to deliver the finished fighter for South Korea. The program is expected to cost a total of $7.4 billion, making it the most expensive program in the history of South Korea's defense manufacturing. In spite of the cost, once the fighter is fully tested and enters its production stages, it'll not only become the backbone of the South Korean Air Force, but also have tremendous export possibilities as other smaller nations look to get an operational fifth-generation fighter to boost their own air forces. On September 3, 2020, Korea Aerospace Industries released photos showing the initial prototype taking shape, and the fighter is supposed to be finished by April 2021. Photos show the most of the fuselage, which seems to have been completed with three major components. The forward fuselage, that includes the cockpit, the central barrel fuselage, with the internal wings attached, and a tail unit, which shows the flying surfaces have not been added yet. Because of the color of the components, most of the structure seems to be made of composite materials. Other major sub-assemblies are now in the process of being put together on the production line. We're excited to finally see some new fighters being made and coming together. When the new South Korean jet fighter finally gets in the air, you'll definitely hear about it here. So, make sure you subscribe and turn on your notifications so you won't miss out. Thanks for watching.